Acton? Where the hell is Acton? Hello, and welcome back to SCSI London. So today, we're gonna to be exploring Acton. So let's see what it's got to offer. We are here at the moment in more or less mm, South Acton, I guess. And up in front of us, Gunnersbury Avenue. Let's turn onto that and see what we've got. So just down a bit from the North Circle of where we were a few minutes ago, we've got behind me Acton Town Tube Station, which is served by the District Line and the Piccadilly Line. The Piccadilly line is particularly useful as it goes to Heathrow Airport which would explain a lot of the people living in this area I guess. I've used it myself quite a lot. Love travelling, been to Heathrow loads of times. I've been through the station many a time on the Piccadilly line going to Heathrow. So let's go beyond that, just down back behind it and see what's going on down in South Acton. Alright, we're going to swing it right down here and go down Bolo Lane, past Acton Town seem to have lots of high-rises and estates. Lots of new builds here. We've got to have a look. I do love a bit of brickwork, as you know. But look at this. Blimey. Yeah, all right. Okay, West Park. Wow, this is some proper urban exploring going on. This is they're new like this, it looks great. So I guess that's what's been coming down, stuff like that, while these on the right have been going up. Very New York. That's a school. That's the big tiger. There's the outdoor gyms I was mentioning before. That is a well equipped gym. Tempted to do some pull-ups. Still on the bike and do them? Is that crazy? <laughs> okay, this is pretty mental. But I can't even do one. Oh, come on! So for me, Acton is a bit more urban than maybe Ealing, which is a bit more spread out, a bit flatter, a bit wider, maybe a bit greener. So Acton's a bit more built up. Heck of a lot of new build high rise flats around here. I had no idea it had gone up to this extent. Oh, yes, some of the old ones. A quick look around here. More of the old style. And this is the back of that one we just saw from the other side. Wow. It reminds me of my school. My school was like this. It really was. As ugly as. Oh, well, I'd love to get in there. Have kind a of proper explore. Oh, cool. Oh, good luck. So just in case you're wondering, it is a little quieter than normal today, I guess. Apart from being a Sunday, because I've got good weather to get out. It is a holiday day as well, a holiday Sunday. So it's probably a lot quieter than normal. You're not going to see as many bodies about in places like this. Um, people might be indoors or doing family stuff, but it gives us a good opportunity to have a good look around. Not very exciting. But it's just that I've never been here and I want to know what it's all about. This is the South Acton Industrial Estate. Ah, oh, look at that. Okay, something. Stop in the middle of the road because I can. My very first car, <laughs> my very first car was a Triumph and so was my second because I wrote off the first car and got the second one. Long story. Anyway, so there's a Triumph and TR and Stag specialist here. Oh, there's even the front of an old TR7. Don't see many of those these days. What a cool place. Some unusual but block flats. Kind of chamfered on two of the sides. I'm going to go somewhere where I've heard about, but never been. 
directly opposite here. Let's see what's, what's going on. In there? Yes. Thank you. Museum Way, private road. So I saw this on a map and thought, what the hell is this? Of course it's all closed, but I can show you where it is and what it's about maybe. Somewhere in there, inside all of that. It's a museum all about like transport, if you're into transport. And trains and buses and all things transport. So you can come here and have a look, I believe. There's the Piccadilly line going into the station. Peeps. That's confusing. Mill Hill Road. There is a Mill Hill in very north London. So we're miles away from that. Acton Fire Station. Every little town needs to have its own fire station. Let's do a right. Okay, here we are. To me, this is the main junction. This is like Acton Central. It's not Actel Central exactly, but it's the main area. <coughs> so that pub, it's called the Red Lion and Pineapple. And it used to be a regular haunt for me. We used to come down on a Thursday night. They used to have a curry club. <laughs> Thing where you'd have a, could get a curry and a pint for, I don't know, X amount of money. However much it was. A few quid, but it was a deal, you know? Curry and a pint, not bad. Three of us would come down, it was a regular thing. Meet up, have a chat, chew the fat go home, a couple of pints of cider and a good curry. Result, cheap night out. That building over there, you can see it, that's completely different, it's brand new. But it used to be another one of my old motorcycle haunts. Because they used to sell clothing and helmets and chains and locks and all sorts. I think I bought my first ever jacket in there. It was a terrible thing, blue thing with one of those waistbands. But again, Motorcycle. That's why I was surprised the other one was open because so many motorcycle shops have closed. I don't really know why. But yet, yeah, everything changes. That's how it goes. Now we come to a good one. Well, kind of good, although the name has changed, bit of a shame. So on this same junction, this same corner, we have got what is now called the Aeronaut. But when I was here, when I used to come here a lot, it was called, and some of you will remember this hopefully, this was the red back. And it was all black, it was more like the black that you see up there and down that end. But the red back was a bit of a nightclub in the area. Kind of mainly, I guess, aimed at the Antipodean visitors. The Australians, New Zealanders, South Africans that were all in the area. But yeah, it was a cool nightclub. I saw some great bands in there and had some pretty interesting evenings. Some of which are not for YouTube. Yep, good nights in the old red back. Now the aeronaut. Just for you travelers who used to live here, want to get another overview? Here we go. Remember that boys, remember having fun in there when it was the red back? I wonder how long it's been the aeronaut. I have a sneaky feeling it's been a very long time now. So just opposite here, we've got the big police station. Been here for years, quite well known that. By the way, this road, this is the Uxbridge Road. This is the road that we were on when we were in Ealing. If I keep going back the other direction, the opposite way, come across Ealing again the same road, goes all the way along, and it keeps going this way all the way along, to Shepherd's Bush and everywhere else. Look at that, the six bells. I've got six bells where I live. Woohoo! That was fun. Okay, boring fact of the day. Somewhere around here, maybe on the high street, the very first Waitrose shop was, because a Mr. Wait, a Mr. Rose, and a Mr. Taylor all got together and started selling fruit and veg, I believe, and then they opened a the shop. What do you know? Years later, turned into Waitrose. There were a few around the country, a few around the, you know, around London area. And then, that was the start of it. Okay, boring fact done. Alright, so this is effectively Act Acton High Street, the main street itself. Yeah, it's not a beautiful place. It's alright, it's got everything you want. I know it relatively well. 
managed to get a few things along here from time to time. See, this place is called the Oaks. Now there's a connection to the Oak Farm. Well, we're not going to go too far along the high street. It's pretty tedious. It's just a high street. Not much to see. Let's try this one. Hang a left. Let's see what we got. Beer garden, dodgy pub, the windmill. All right, all right. Terraced houses, a street. This looks promising. Old school London, uphill. Struggling, struggling. There's another bit of a high street there. I'll go down. Uh, that's the Zaytun supermarket. It's a bit scuzzy. I think they found the true meaning of scuzzy London around here, to be honest. Saying that, there goes a Bentley right past me. Well, this is quite nice. This is Newburgh Street. Did any of you live here? This is, seems like quite a nice street. I like these big style houses with uh, lots of windows and lots of squiggly looking rooms. I would say maybe one of the nicer parts of Acton Town. At a glance, you know. Oh, is that an alley? No. This is a nice street. These houses have some sort of the arts and crafts style about them going on. There you go. Quite nice looking places. Nice and tidy. I like the arches and the doorways. Nicely made. Bit of style. And I have to say, it seems quite nice around here. Look at this big mural. That's very impressive. Oh, the old Bedford. The old Ford Van Rock. <laughs> old Ford Transit. Chaucer Road. Yeah. This has definitely got a bit more history going on around here. To give you bearings, we are just a little bit north of Acton Central. And all these range of streets around here. Chaucer, okay, Shakespeare Road. Okay, so they've named them after famous authors, I guess. Woodhurst, was he an author? She, he? Yeah, if you're gonna live in Acton, come to just north of Acton Central area. Oh, here we go, Acton Central. This is the tube station. So I've been here, and this is on a different line to um, the underground, I think. This is the over Overland. There we go. Acton Central, right here. Any of you remember the rocket? Did anybody used to drink here, come here? Nice looking place. But as Bono said, I still haven't found what I'm looking for. is something that I know nothing about. I'm going to show it to you and you can decide. Rather well-known arms houses. Again, don't know what it means. Haven't done my research. I'm sorry. I can show you though. Goldsmith buildings. So yeah, I don't really know the reason for this. Something to do with the goldsmiths. Goldsmith buildings. Arms houses. I assume they lived in. They look kind of lived in. Let's poke you through the bars to have a better look. Go, that's pretty cool. Well, that's Acton. Who knew? You might have to do your own research on this one. Arms houses. Look it up. Arms with an L. A L M S. And behind us, a park. Let's go check it out. All right, I've got a fact about this park for you. If I can remember it. This, it may be this entrance or another entrance that wasn't here until a bomb was dropped from the Second World War and flattened some of the houses so they made an entrance out of it instead. Might have to give you some better facts than that. Or more accurate ones, so let's try again. All right, let's have a look at this. All right, we've got us some sort of obelisk type monument. I'm gonna make it brief and I'm gonna take a picture of it so you guys can read it if you're really interested. Acton Urban District Council something about James Radcliffe, Earl of Derwent Water and a rebellion in 1715. I'll take a picture, you can read the rest. Right, let's have a scout around this park, see what it's all about. 
Acton Central Park, I guess. Oh, haha. <laughs> oh, these places are always fun. Mini golf. Put in the park. Look at that. Might keep you entertained on a Sunday afternoon for an hour or two. Oh, I have to come here again. I like this sort of stuff. For a while, when we went on trips on holiday in New Zealand and Canada and a few places, we would always kill time by doing one of these things, if there was one around. One of the best ones was in Denver, a night one. It's absolutely packed on a Saturday night. In putt, putt, whatever you call it, under neon lights. It's great. Because I have lived in Acton and we'll go there later. I've seen it for the first time, which is brilliant. And I'm literally just doing my usual, following my nose, wondering where the hell I'm going. I think there's a bit of a pond thing down there. This ain't bad. Maybe I was wrong to say it was a bit more urban than healing. It's doing all right. There you go. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, so far, this is the best area of Acton, without a doubt. South Acton, nice flats and stuff, but not very green. In my this bit, it's got the history. It's got the arms houses. Ooh, skate ramp on the way in. <laughs> oh, it's so tempting. I'm gonna have a quick look. No skating for old men. Yeah, I won't do this. Kids everywhere. Oh, I'll skip it. Must be good. Leave it to the youth. We'll, we'll have a look. Let's just, let's just give you a look at it. It's pretty cool. Just some radical Aussie dude, man. I want to bring the skateboard with him. Bring it here. biggest of parks. Wherever you live in London, you've got a park somewhere nearby. It's just a matter of finding it. Your local park will be nice. If you ain't got much money, the summer comes, if nothing else, you can just go lounge out there on your sarong in the park, soak it up. I say that because that's what I did a hell of a lot of when I was in places like Australia. What have you, you don't want to spend money, but you do want to have a nice day. You go and chill out in the park in the sun. Time of year it is. This time. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, bud. Let me help. There you go. Ready? <laughs> you need to go that way. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> Got to play with a dog. Yeah, it's this time of year. Not bad. Park opened to the public in 1888 to commemorate the Golden Jubilee of Queen Victoria. The northern boundary of the park changed during World War II. There were allotments on this part of the park, but in October 1945, prefabs were constructed to house ex-servicemen. There was a considerable sloping bank along the northern edge of the park, but when the prefabs were removed, this was also removed. So I'm thinking this is this area, because I'm at the northern end now. So I'd say that was all this. The middle entrance on the northern boundary is a modern addition to the park. Created as a result of a flying bomb which demolished houses number 4, 6, 8 and 10 of East Churchfields Road. A railing extends around the park on the northern, eastern and southern eastern sides. Most of the railings are modern but there are some historic railings at the entrances. Which is where I came in and 
somewhere I'll go out. This year park was originally opened in 1888. Let's show you somewhere else. Somewhere related to our story from last week. Let's go. All right, we've got to cross back over the tracks and by the looks of it, there's a train coming. Get out of here. That's kind of a weird one because it's a one-way street. But on a bike, you can go the other way. So it's kind of a two-way street. Well, this is not what I wanted, but I'm going to improvise here. That's a mad building over there. Wow. So this is the west way. Keep on going out east and it turns into the A40. Basically, we're here, they call it the west way because it's leading west. It also leads, obviously, back into central London, eventually becomes Baker Street. If you keep going back that way. And these buildings are all new, to me, anyway. Right, we're going down here. Let's see what we've got. I've eaten at this place. Harry's Bar. Some crazy burger bar thing. Look at this. <laughs> well, yeah, all day burgers and breakfast. Wow. What a crazy place. So Acton Main Line, and also now the Elizabeth Line, which it wasn't when I was here. Thank you. So, quick stop here, really quick. That way we've got North Acton, and this is the Acton Main Line, which, going that direction, is going towards Ealing, Ealing Broadway, where we were last week. This is all new to me. It's gone up in the world, I tell you, all Acton literally gone up so just to give you an idea of what's happening in the country and what's been happening for the last 15 20 years or so is that pubs have been closing so what we see behind me here is the apple tree healthy foods which also looks to be closed but when i was living around here that was a pub i played darts in that pub and had some fun i've actually even got a video on youtube of me playing darts in that pub it's incredible the pubs have been closing Pubs have been closing in London for quite some time. I've lived in areas and watched four, five, six pubs close around me. So pub culture of the UK has changed quite a bit lately. So I don't know where that's leading, but anyway, that's what happens to them. They turn into flats or shops or something else or they just close. It's a little bit sad. A friend of mine has a flat here. Uh, this one, one of these somewhere. He lets out. Right. You see at the base of those buildings, not the base of them really, but just here, we've got some houses. Let me tell you about those houses. <laughs> so what are we doing here? In the last episode we were in Ealing. And when we were in Ealing, I was sleeping on my friend's couch. I told you I lived there and I got a I got a job. I got a part not a part-time, a temporary job. And when I got that job, I had to move out. So when I moved out, I had to find somewhere to live. And I found somewhere to live here, on Horn Lane, this major road, just across the road there. I'm not going to say which number it was. It may have some blue on it. So uh, it was a share house, and I lived in the share house with four of us. It's a three-bedroom house, and they converted uh, one of the lower rooms into a fourth bedroom. So it was a, a, friend of, a guy who became a friend of mine from Birmingham, and a young couple from Stoke, and they were great. And it was a really fun house. I mean, I didn't know, none of us knew what a kind of a, uh, not a brilliant area it was, but the rent was good. The room was great. I had my own double room on a double bed, the back of the house. I was so lucky, I couldn't believe it. And the house was, it's quite original because it has a lane at the back and it had a garage. So I could get a motorbike, which is exactly what I did. I did my lessons over a, towards Ealing and I bought my first motorbike. That's when life really started in London. When I started going out with Tim and my friend and you know going to that pub down the road which is now closed and heading into central London and having all sorts of adventures. I had a job, I had a bit of money and life was starting to pick up. Yeah they were quite good times. One of the reasons I was glad to find this place apart from having a room of my own and a place of my own was that where I worked 
pretty close. It's actually just up, up that way. So it was a real find. It's probably one of the reasons that swayed me to taking it because these houses across the road, they're on a bit of an island. If you were to see it from the air, this row across there like that is in a, like a triangle of an island. There's a road run behind it. There's a road across the front. There's a major road across the side. You've got the west way there. You've got Horn Lane here. So it's a little bit of a little pocket of an island be honest it's not really a very nice place to live I mean this road never sleeps yeah I was glad I had the room at the back of the house I was very lucky the neighbors weren't very nice they didn't like us <laughs> I mean at the time when you don't know an area you don't know where you are you don't really care you're in London you're close to London and you know you're young and you get about North Acton is just up there we'll go and check that out in a bit industrial estate work there's buses from all directions from here so it wasn't bad it wasn't central but yeah, it was fine. And of course, back down that way, down there is Acton Town itself, and places like the Redback, links to Heathrow, all sorts of decent connections, really. So yeah, had some really fun times here. Let's go and explore the next bit. Well, that's it for part one of Acton. Join me next week as I make a quick exit and revisit some of my favorite scuzzy places. Down the street with your red